What is the must condition to have inverses of functions? The must condition is one to one. If a function is one to one, then it is invertible. It has an inverse. Now I have a question. Are six trigonometric functions one to one or not? As you know, the six trigonometric functions are periodic functions. This is why they are not one-to-one. -one. Since they are not one-to-one, -one, they are not invertible with their domains. This is very crucial remark. But, however, if you restrict their domains, then you have inverse trigonometric functions. If you do not restrict their domains, then of course you do not have inverse trigonometric functions since they are not one-to-one, -one, since they would be uh, periodic functions. Let me now remind you the graphs of some trigonometric functions, sine function, cosine function, and the tangent function. As I told you, the domain of sine, for instance, is from infinity to infinity, and the original sine function as you see, is not is not one to one. Okay, it is a domain of sine from infinity to infinity. But if we restrict, if we cut a piece of this graph, let's say from minus pi over two to pi over two. Okay, if you only take this part of the graph from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, if you take only this part, then it means, of course, you restrict the domain, right? Then, in, in this case, the graph is not periodic uh, and uh, it is one to one. This is why you have arc sine function. So, what is the restricted domain? As I told you, it is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, the new domain. What is the range? The range is from minus 1 to 1. Close interval, minus 1 to 1. So in this case, what is the graph of inverse, inverse of this function? So the graph of inverse becomes let's focus now first the, the domain the domain of sine becomes range of arc sine let's try to draw this is arc sine function okay so what is the graph of arc sine let's say we have from minus one to one okay this is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And inverse sine. You have this one. Okay, this is inverse sine function. And the domain of arc sine is the range of sine from minus 1 to 1 range of arc sine is the domain of sine okay and as you see the graph of sine is a reflection of graph of arc sine or vice versa, the graph of arc sine is the reflection of sine in the line y equals x. Okay, if you draw a, a line y equals x, then you see that they are symmetric with respect to the graph of sine and the graph of arc sine is symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. Let me show you. This is the line y equals x and as you see they are symmetric 
with respect to the line as you say I'm not good at drawing okay as you see they are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x it is another point okay and all trigonometric functions are the reflections uh, or all trigonometric and inverse trigonometric functions uh, are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x and now let's look at the graph of uh, cosine and arc cosine function and as you see this is the graph of cosine function okay if you restrict the domain if you only take this part from 0 to pi this is pi from 0 to pi and uh, in this case the range becomes from minus 1 this is minus 1 this is 1 from minus 1 to 1 close interval of course uh, and what about as I as I told you you if you draw a y equals x line then you will easily draw the inverse cosine you will easily draw arc cosine let's say this is the point one this is the point minus one do not forget that the, the range of cosine becomes domain of arc cosine so the domain is from minus one to one range is from zero to pi okay this this is y equals arc cosine arc cosine x so i need the space here let me draw here okay arc cosine so let's say this is the point pi over 2 this is the point pi over 2 and you have something like this okay so it is the graph of arc cosine function and finally I want to introduce tangent function here this is the graph of tangent x uh, and the domain of tangent as you see is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 this is the domain and the range as you see is from what from minus infinity so we need an open interval from minus infinity to infinity it is the range of tangent what about the graph of arctangent function the graph of arctangent function is something like this y is arc tangent x domain range so this is the graph of arctangent something like this if you draw a parallel line with respect to y equals x then you see that you have this graph arctangent x okay they must be symmetric with respect to y equals x and the range of tangent becomes domain of arctangent domain of arctangent becomes range of arctangent domain of tangent becomes range of arctangent okay so using the same idea i strongly advise you that draw uh, other trigonometric and inverse tri the graphs of other trigonometric functions and see their domains and ranges. and I also want you want to remind you that uh, if y is equal to uh, sine inverse x sine inverse x 
in this case x is equal to if you apply sine to the both sides of a quantity you have x equals sine y okay i think you are familiar with this identity from high school but i want to remind you if you have arc tangent if you apply tangent to these sides then x equals tangent y they are basic but they are important uh, if you say y equals arc cosine then in this case x becomes cosine y and finally if you say y equals arc cotangent x in this case x becomes cotangent y and do not forget that y is the function of x y here is not a variable y is a function of x let's have some examples okay assume that we are looking we are looking for this value arc sine square root 3 over 2 so if you are looking for the value of this expression the value of arc sine square root over 3 let's say this is equal to x we don't know what is x in this case if you apply since this is sine inverse if you apply sine to the east side of the equality you have sine x is equal to square root 3 over 2 so you are asking for which value of sine for which value of sine you have square root over 2 for which value if you ask this question you will immediately get the result x equals pi over 3 for pi over 3 sine is equal to square root over 2 another example arc cosine minus 1 over 2 using the same idea let's say this is equal to x we don't know what is x we are looking at the value of x then since you have inverse cosine on the left hand side of the equality apply cosine to each side of the equality then you have cosine x so since you apply cosine to the right hand side of the equality you have cosine x is equal to minus 1 over 2 so you are asking this question the same question for which value of cosine you have minus 1 over 2 then if you ask this question you immediately you immediately have x is equal to 2 pi over 3 okay you can respond uh, this kind of questions using this method uh, I finally want to, uh, you re to remind you that truncated versions of trigonometric functions have inverses. Okay? If you do not restrict their domains, then you cannot have inverse trigonometric functions. It is the first part of the lecture. In the second part, we will uh, focus on derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions. Then I will give some proofs how proofs of inverse trigonometric functions I I am sure that you know what is derivative of sine but how can you show derivative of sine is equal to cosine I will explain this I will give some proofs in the next lecture